In this video, we're going to look on deflection of themes. We have several methods of finding the deflection of theme. We have the double integration method. We have the moment area method. We have Markalis method. And we have the finite element method. And there are some other methods which I haven't mentioned. So in this video, we're going to look on double integration method and Markalis method. Let's take a look at a simply supported beam with a pin and a roller. When a concentric force is applied at the center of this beam, this beam will bend. When the force is released, the beam will return to its original shape. We're going to start by defining angle of rotation and deflection. We now know that when a beam is under load, it will deflect. This is the original shape of a beam when no force is applied. But when the beam bent, this one is going to become the new shape. There's a separation distance between the first line and the second line. And that distance is what we call the deflection and are going to denote it by letter V. The dotted line that you see, it's a curve and it's called a deflection curve. If we take a tangent, we can find the angle of rotation, which is theta, which can help us to determine by how much is our beam rotated from its original position. Now you know what is deflection and what is angle of rotation. Let's get into it. We have different methods that we use to find the deflection of the beams, starting with the double integration method, the moment area method, and the Markelis method. The first two methods are usually used when you have single loads, and the last method is used for several loads. In this case, we're going to look on double integration method and the Markelis method. The question now is what is the formula for finding the deflection of a beam? This is the formula that we use. M is the bending moment. If you don't know what is the bending moment, we're going to look at it later on in this video. E is the modulus of elasticity. And final R is the moment of inertia. D2, dy, dx2, this is just a second derivative. So this will help us to find the angle of rotation and the deflection of the beam. When I should do our beams deflect, we have only considered one case. Beams can either walk, which you call a positive bending, or sag, which you call a negative bending. If our beam is sagging, we put a negative on the formula, and if our beam is sagging, we just put a positive. Now let's take a look at an example. We have a simply supported beam, and we have a force, and we have two supports, the pin and the roller. And we're told that the force is 3 kN, which means it's 3,000 N. We're also given the length of the beam, which is 4.2 meters. Here's our question. A simply supported I section beam shown is 4.2 meters long. A load of 3 kN is applied at its mid span. Determine the deflection and the angle of rotation at a point 3 meters from support A. We're given that the product of the modulus of elasticity and moment of inertia is equal to 1.029 times 10 to the power 6 newtons per square meters. This is the point we want to find the deflection and the angle of rotation. We're going to start by sectioning our beam. You either cut before the force or after the force. In this case, I'm going to cut before the force. We now have two sections, section one and section two. And let's put our supports and we still have our force. And we should not forget our point of interest, which is three meters from support A. We're going to have reactions that support A and support B. So we're going to start by first writing our static equilibrium equation. All we have to do is to resolve vertical since our beam is not moving. That means all the forces acting along the y-axis should be equal to zero. We're going to have an upward force at reaction A and an upward force at reaction B. As you can see, the load is in the downward direction. So I'm going to say RA plus RB minus F should be equal to zero. And that means you can say RA plus RB is equal to 3 kN. Now let's make RA subtle with the formula and call this equation 1. We can't find the value of RA and RB without a second equation. So we need another equation. And that equation is going to be the moment equation. So I'm going to take moments about any point that we want. But in this case, I'm going to take moments about point A. I'm going to take my counterclockwise as positive. Since I'm taking moments about point A, RA will not have an effect, but RB will have an effect, and it's going to be RB times the distance from point A, which is 4.2, and it's going to be a positive since I say that I'm taking counterclockwise as positive. The load will also have an effect, but the load is going in the downward direction, so it's going to have a minus, and it's going to be F times the distance from the support A, which is 2.1. And if I write that equation, I can now finally find the value of RB. 
And if I substitute RB in equation 1, I can see that RA is 1.5 kN. Some of you may say, since the force is acting at the center, those two supports are going to share the same force, so it's going to be 1.5 kN. Now that we have the reaction forces that are supposed, I think it's time we move on to find the deflection and the angle of rotation. So what we're going to do here is to cut the beam at the point of interest just like this. As you can see, the distance from support A to the point of interest is now denoted by X instead of 3 meters. The reason why I'm doing that is because I want to find the general equation that will give me the deflection of the beam at end point. We're going to name our point of interest E. At the point E, our beam is going to have a deflection. Some of you may put V, it's still okay. And we're going to have a bending moment. We need to find the MX and we're going to do that by taking the moments at point E. Since our beam is static, the total moments about point E should be equal to zero. RA is going to have an effect and the distance of RA from E is going to be equal to X. But the distance from the force from point E is going to be equal to x minus 2.1. Now, all we have to do is write our moment equation. All we need right now is to make mx subject of the formula. This is the formula that we use. And we have everything that we need. I'm going to use y double prime for the second derivative. And instead of writing m, I'm going to write our new formula. To find yx, we have to integrate. If we integrate, we're going to be left with the first derivative of x and we're also going to have a constant of integration. In this case, we're going to call it c1. There's a trick right here using the double integration method. You don't have to expand the brackets. We have y prime of x, but we need y of x. There's a good thing about y prime of x because y prime of x will help us to find the angle of rotation. Like I said, the angle of rotation is the gradient. So to find the gradient of something, we use differentiation, which is the first derivative of y with respect to x. To find y of x, we have to integrate that equation again. But in this case, if you integrate this equation, we're going to have another constant, which we're going to call c2. Since c1 is a constant, if you integrate a constant, you have to add x. This equation will now give us the deflection. All you have to do now is to find the value of the constants and after that you can easily find our deflection at end point. To find those constants, we use what you call boundary conditions. If we look at our beam, we're going to have the maximum deflection at the center. That means the angle of rotation is going to be equal to zero because we're going to have a straight line and the gradient of a straight line is going to be zero. So this one is going to be our first boundary equation. And remember, since the beam is 4.2 meters long, the center is at 2.1. At x equals to 2.1, the angle of rotation is going to be equal to 0. And don't know the deflection. As you can see, our boundary condition is the angle theta. So that means we have to use the first equation. Now what we have to do is to sub our boundary condition in equation number 1. For the angle of rotation, we are going to have 0. And if we multiply EI by 0, we are going to also have 0. We have the value of RA. So now let's substitute everything that we have into our equation. If we do that, this is what we're going to get. Now let's make C1 circuit with the formula and then simplify. If we do that, we're going to get our C1 is 3307.5. We now have to find C2. We're going to use the same boundary condition. Let's take a look at support B. At support B, the beam can deflect because it can roll, but the beam can rotate. So that means the deflection is going to be equal to zero, but the angle of rotation, we don't know. Now let's write our second boundary condition. And remember that it support Bx is 4.2, both it is going to be the full length. We don't know the value of the angle of rotation, which is theta, only know the value of V, which is deflection, and in this case, it's quite x. So that means we have to use the second equation. We have to sub our boundary condition in this formula. You also have to remember that we now have the value of C1, and also have the value of Ra. And right here, as you can see, everything will just cancel each other. And we're going to have a value of C2, which is equal to 0. Now that we have the value of the constants, all you have to do is to plug in the value for x so that we can find the value of the angle of rotation and the value of the deflection. Let's put our question right here so that we won't forget what we are being asked. We need to find the angle of rotation and the deflection of beam at a point which is 3 meters from A. We're going to start by finding the angle of rotation. Let's write our data right here. Let's write our angle of rotation equation right here. All you have to do is to sub everything that we have into this equation. 
we have r a we have e times i we also have x and x is three if we do that you can simply get our answer and remember you have to divide both sides by e i in order to make our x out of the formula and if we sub everything this is what we are going to get so it's now a time of simplifying so if we simplify we are going to get our angle of rotation as negative 0 0.003 degrees it's negative because it's going in the downward direction now let's move on to the deflection we're also going to write the data that we have nothing has changed x is still 3 the only thing that is changing is the equation that we are using in this case we are using the second equation Let's sub everything that we have. X is 3, EI is 1.029 times 10 to the power 6, RA is 1,500. If we do that, we're going to get our answer 0 0.003 meters. As you notice, this method is very long and tiresome. Just imagine one given several point loads. That's why you have another method which is very good when you have a bar with several loads. A beam of length 6 meters simply supported at its end and carries two point loads of 48 kN and 40 kN at a distance of 1 meter and 3 meter respectively from the left support, which is support A. Find the deflection under each load. Given that, E is equal to 2 times 10 to the power 5 newtons per square millimeter and I is equal to 85 times 10 to the power 6. First of all, we have to find the reaction forces and the best way to do that, let's start by writing the moment equation. We're going to take our moments about point A and since the beam is static, all the moments should be equal to 0. R A will not have any effect on point A but the 40 kN load is going to have an effect so does the 40 kN and R B. Since we are taking counterclockwise is positive, R B is going to be positive and all those two forces are going to be negative. This is going to be our moment equation and all we have to do is make R B subject of the formula and if we do that you can see that R B is equals to 28 kN. Now it's up to you, you can also take moments about point B to find R A. To keep everything simple, we're going to write the static equilibrium equation. We're going to resolve along the y-axis and the total sum of the forces acting along the y-axis should be equal to zero. Let's write our static equilibrium equation. Now we have to do is to make R A subject of the formula. And if we do that, you can see R A is 60 kN. Our formula for finding the angle of rotation and the deflection of beam is unchanged. The only thing that is going to change is going to be the procedure. Since we need to find the deflection under each load, we have to cut our beam after the last force. Let's say right here. And the distance from the R A to this point, let's just call it X so that we can come up with the deflection equation. Let's call this point E and take moments about point E. In this case, taking clockwise direction is positive. The distance of the 40 kN force from point E is going to be x minus 1. And the distance of the force kN force from point E is going to be x minus 3. Now let's take the moments about point E. So Me is going to be x times Ra, the moment produced by the reaction force at point A. Now let's move on to the 40 kN. In this case, it's going to be negative. And we're also going to move on to the 40 kN force. And it's going to be negative. Here's the trick. We want to find the deflection under each load. From point A, we have uncovered the end load. At point C, we have covered the first load. At point D, we have covered the second load. At point E, we have covered all the loads. So that means we don't have to include R, B since we have covered all the loads that we want. So that means only have three sections that we want. The first one, the second, and the third. That is the trick of the Mokales method. Since now we have M, it's time to write our formula and substitute everything. This is what we're going to have. And you have to leave those sections as they are so that you won't get confused. The next thing that we do, we integrate. And for the integration part, you have to be very careful because only put the constant at the first. And on integrating, you have to be very careful because you have to put the constant of integration in the first region. And like I told you before, you don't have to expand those brackets, otherwise you end up with wrong answers. Now we have to integrate again so that we can have the function of y in terms of x. If we integrate the first derivative, we're just going to have y of x. And also going to have another second constant of integration. And remember to put x on c1. 
to find the value of C1 and C2 is under conditions. At support A, you are going to have no deflection, so that means that x equals to 0, v is equals to 0, or we can put y equals to 0, just use the letter that you want to use for deflection. Since x equals to 0 is in the first section, so that means it's going to affect this section of the equation, which is the first section. All you have to do is substitute a boundary condition in the first part of the equation, excluding this one. And if you do that, you can find that our C2 will be equal to 0. Our second boundary condition is at support B. The deflection is also going to be equal to 0. But as you can see, at support B, all three sections are going to be included. So that means let's substitute everything that we have in this equation. Now let's do that to find the value of C1. So if we do a simplification, you can see that C1 is equal to negative 163.33. Now we have the value of C1 and C2. It's time to find the deflection under each load. And this one is going to be our deflection equation. We're going to start by finding the deflection under the 48 kN load. As you can see, this is a 48 kN load. That means we're also going to take the first and the second section of the equation. So this is going to be the equation that we're going to use. And remember, I've excluded the last section because the last section is for the 48 kN load. 48 kN load is 1 meter from A. So we need to substitute our x in this formula. And if we do that, this is what we're going to have. And this one is going to be our simplified equation. The problem that we have is we are given E and I in millimeters, yet our equation is in terms of meters. So you have two choices. Either you can change millimeters to meters or you can change meters to millimeters. But I think in this case, we can change meters to millimeters. And to change meters to millimeters, you have to multiply it by 10 to the power 3. And to change meters to millimeters to the power 4, it will multiply by 10 to the power 12. And don't forget to divide both sides by EI. So you have to do is to divide both sides by EI and apply our converted values. And if we do that, we can find our deflection in millimeters. Now let's find the deflection under the foot clinton load. So we're going to consider this whole equation. And remember that X is now 3 because the foot clinton load is 3 meters from point A. Now all we have to do is substitute X into our formula. And if we do that, we're going to get this one as our simplified equation. All you have to do is to divide both sides by EI, and you have to change everything to millimeters. So if we do that, we're going to get our answers negative 16.7 millimeters. Thank you for watching. See you next time.